So, thank you. Um, yeah, warm welcome from me. I'm Nico Meisenthal. I think we already got um, a nice introduction. So, um, this session is mainly about how we can use GitLab and build your GitLab CI CD pipelines um, and somehow streamline and enhance them with Kubernetes and open source tools. Um, so, we have five different topics. Um, all we get a small introduction, and we will then head up uh, into demos, and hopefully, all demos will work. Um, so first one is how to move your um, pipeline workload into your Kubernetes cluster. So how you can uh, containerize your whole pipelines and why you should do. Um, then how you can build your container images within your cluster. Um, and then talk is around securing your application um, when they're running. And um, then about how you can enhance your application deployment onto Kubernetes. And last thing will be about um, GitLab serverless and talking about um, your ways that you can only focus on your code and not think about um, yeah all that deployment stuff and running it in production. Yeah, so let's start um, on how to move your containerized or how to containerize your pipeline workload and bring it to a Kubernetes cluster. So um, just some hands. Who is using Kubernetes already? Does anyone run um, the pipelines on the Kubernetes cluster? Oh, cool, some of you. Um, so that's something cool from GitLab, which is called GitLab Runner Kubernetes Executor. This is basically um, a runner as we know it, um, which is running our workload and building our stuff, running our, running our pipelines. But this one itself is um, running in Kubernetes and allows you to trigger your jobs in Kubernetes, which basically mean a pipeline job, a, a task, compiling something, building something, deploying something, is not running on any kind of Linux Windows machine, so it's running inside a container, or better, inside of a pod within your Kubernetes cluster, which is pretty nice, because it's containerized, so you can put in all your dependencies, it's completely isolated, you don't have any issues, the build is running on runner one, on the second runner, it sometimes has issues because of dependencies and so on, it's just based on a common container image, it's everything the same, and you can yeah also pretty much scale um, your pipelines because you can just scale your Kubernetes cluster and you're able to scale all your pipelines. So um, to do so, first of all, you need to um, install um, the Kubernetes executor. One thing is to just do a click in your um, GitLab CI and deploy it from the uh, from the UI, um, but you can also automate it and just install it with with, with Helm. Um, and then you have the runner inside your Kubernetes cluster and can schedule all your work. Um, we have some smaller things which are a little bit different. If you build um, inside of containers, you need to think about how can I cache stuff because you will start up a new instance every time, which is completely fresh. So you should think about caching and also how to, to download and upload your artifacts before you build and after you build. And this is something which is completely handled by um, the Kubernetes executor. Um, though it's not only starting your container image you would like to, to use for your build, it's also starting some, yeah, let's call it service containers, which are preparing the environment. So um, downloading or um, yeah, fetching your code, um, uploading artifacts if you need them to deploy, or even um, yeah, provide you your cache or even after your build um, finished or your deployment finished, also write back the cache or upload the artifacts to a container registry or somewhere else. So it's completely handled by the Kubernetes executor and you don't need to build things um, to build caching on your own, which is pretty nice. Um, yeah, so first demo. Um, let's see how this works in action. Um, so first of all, um, just um, the UI, how you can integrate your Kubernetes cluster. So you can just go into your project on the um, Kubernetes page. In this case, it's, uh, it's a group, but it's um, nearly the same in the project folder. And here you can add um, a cluster or create a new one. So you can um, create a Google Kubernetes cluster or Amazon cluster or integrate any other cluster. So on-premise, uh, Azure, doesn't matter. Um, yeah, and I already uh, connected um, my GitLab group um, and all my project in the group with my cluster, and it's basically um, yeah, providing 
handed down some um, Kubernetes settings, where's my API, my certificates, and so on. And then I have an option to install some applications. Like in this uh, time I installed um, Helm to be able to deploy with Helm. Um, I installed the GitLab um, Ingress, which allows me to um, expose my, uh, my applications, cert manager to um, manage my certificates, and so on and so on. So this is the basic stuff you need to do one time before you have the integration set up um, and can work with all the tools I will show you now. Um, so first of all, I have a small project. Um, it's basically containing um, a small web application with just uh, a sample application and um, a small CI CD pipeline. So let's have a look. And those stuff is really basic. It's just to, to give you some, some examples. So um, it's basically one stage, which only does a deployment. Um, and we have some variables, um, which we use later. Mainly, we have a Helm uh, image. It's basically uh, a Docker image or linked to a Docker registry in a Docker image, which we'll use to run our um, job in. Um, and we have um, the Ingress host, where we would like to export the stuff. And we can define a message, um, which I will show you later. Yeah, then the basic stuff is the really important stuff is the tag. Um, so you can define a tag, which then helps you to tell Kubernetes where to schedule um, your pipeline jobs. In this case, my uh, runner on Kubernetes has a tag Kubernetes. So I'm just providing the tag to Kubernetes and tell him, please deploy it on my containerized um, pipelines. Um, then, because it's in container, I need to provide the image, which is basically um, the Helm image variable. In this case, I'm overwriting the entry point from the Docker image um, just uh, because I would like to, to add some more uh, information. And then here, basically, um, I'm just running a Helm upgrade and providing some um, more information. So pretty uh, straightforward. So um, let's run a pipeline. Um, we will use the message variable. Um, we saw it's just a basic application, um, web application with Fred, it's our company logo. And um, it's possible in this application that I can override um, the first part with any kind of um, information I provided in the, in the message variable. So let's do a hello GitLab commit. And before we run the pipeline, let's switch over to our um, pod. Uh, our Kubernetes cluster. And here we will see um, one important part in this runner, GitLab runner, which is basically our Kubernetes executor. So I'm starting the pipeline, and the Kubernetes executor will talk to my GitLab instance, and we'll see, hey, I have a new uh, job or a new pipelines which I need to trigger. And the GitLab runner will then trigger um, the pipeline run, which basically means it will start um, a pod which then um, is used to, um, to schedule my, um, um, to run my job, I defined. So um, if I now run the pipeline, we will see that we get a new pod. And this pod is basically containing out of two containers, which we see here. Um, the first one is the um, backend container uploading cache, um, providing my source code, and so on. And the second one is my um, Helm image, which I use to, uh, to deploy. Um, yeah, it's already running. Um, and here we see, it's after it, it has started, uh, 25 seconds later, it uh, gets terminated again, which basically means the job is already done. Um, so it took us 25 minutes, uh, seconds to deploy um, the application. Yeah, it's already green, so we can just check the logs. It's basically the same you know um, from different different runners. So it's basically telling me all the information, um, and our um, whole pipeline was running inside our Kubernetes cluster. So just to let you know, normally, yeah, now we're getting the new deployment, um, ham deployment, and it says hello GitLab commit. So it's basically a simple job which runs completely in our Kubernetes cluster inside um, our container image. 
which is pretty nice. So next step, now we have know how we can, can run our pipelines in our Kubernetes cluster. We might also would like to build container images because now we have everything in containers. Would be also good to build our application and to run it in containers. And then we'll be getting uh, some kind of an issue because to run containers or to build containers in containers, um, we basically somehow need, need some, some, some tools to get it work. I'm not sure if you uh, know Docker and Docker, which is one possibility, which basically means different options, but basically running a Docker build inside of a Docker image, which have some issues or disadvantages. Um, you either need to mount the Docker socket from a host inside your container, which is somehow a security issue. Um, you can mounting the valid Docker directory from a host inside your container, which is also not a really good idea. And the last one would be to run a privileged container, which has privileged um, rights on your, on your system, and really run a Docker daemon inside your container. So it somehow works, but it's not really nice. And in a bigger Kubernetes cluster, which is managed, you maybe are not, not able to run privileged uh, modes or mount um, volumes from a host machine. Uh, so we need somehow um, a better solution. And one is Kaniko which is an open source tool um, introduced by Google. And with Kaniku, you have the option to deploy, uh, to build container images within containers without any dependencies and privileges. And this is just perfect for us to um, build our containers. Um, here on the right side, it's, it's pretty small. It's just an example um, how to use Kaniku. In this case, we just, it's just a pod definition. It basically means um, we run a container. Uh, it's called Kaniku. It's based on the Kaniko image, in this case, the last one. And then we just provide the path to our Docker image, the path to our context route, and a destination. Um, destination means the registry where we would like to upload um, the stuff after, after we build it. Um, yeah, and of course, uh, Kaniko also allows you to, um, to cache um, your Docker layers to, yeah, to speed up your pipeline. So how does it look like in, in your pipeline? So I have a other demo, which is basically containing out of a, a Docker file. In this case, it's a Docker file for the Docker image we just use. So it's basically um, an Alpine-based image running Kubernetes, uh, kubectl and now installing uh, the Helm CLI. So it's exactly the Docker image we just used in the previous uh, demo. So once again, it's pretty basic. And what we are now doing is um, we have a new CICD pipeline, which once again um, is triggered on our Kubernetes cluster. Once again, we of course need uh, an image name. And once again, we are overwriting the entry point. Um, we need to, uh, because in this case, after building the image, I would like to upload the image in the Docker registry, um, which is part of my GitLab project. So in this case, I need to provide um, Kaniko authentication details to log in to our registry and to upload it. In this case, um, it's just a simple echo providing um, the CI job token, which is a one-time token only valid in this pipeline run, and, and save it to my configuration JSON file that Kaniko is able to um, push um, the Docker image after it was created. And then we have once again called the Kaniko executor, providing a context route, providing the path to our Docker file, and the destination, which once again, I already told you is a, a registration for my project. Um, yeah, and provided uh, a name and a tag. So, once again, we still have the watch running. Just run the pipeline. And we get a new pod triggered, which is used to uh, schedule our containers. They are already running. So let's switch to the output. Um, yeah, it's checking out the code. creating the config file, and then starting to um, build our images. 
In this case, it's, um, I did not enable the caching, so it will take some, some seconds to finish. Taking a snapshot of the file stream, and now it should be ready in just a second. Job is done. Now back on our kubectl, the port is terminated because our job is done. And we now should have a new image in our community registry. Yeah, so it's 20 second, 27 seconds old. This is how you can build um, container image inside your Kubernetes cluster with um, Kaniko. So, um, sorry, next one is a nice solution how you can secure your um, applications running in Kubernetes with the GitLab Web Application Firewall. Um, yeah, the Git, GitLab Web Application Firewall um, is integrated in the Kubernetes Nginx Ingress, which is deployed when you um, install the Ingress um, from the GitLab UI I showed you in the first, uh, first demo. You install the helm, then you click I would like to have the Ingress, and then you will get an Ingress which also includes a web application firewall. So if you already did it, you may have already used the feature and you just was not aware of it. So what can you do with the GitLab application firewall? Basically, two things. Um, they can find and track um, SQL injections as well as cross-site scripting, which is pretty nice. So you can secure your application and get insights on if you had some, some cross-site scripting attacks or SQL injections. Um, yeah, the whole thing is based on, as I already mentioned, the Kubernetes uh, Nginx Ingress, but also has a, uh, the mod security module enabled. Um, the mod security module then has some enabled um, rule sets, which allow you to, to find those injections, and, um, injections. And in this case, it's based on the Open Web Application Security Project, which is an open source project, and those default, um, default rules. Um, they're slightly customized by GitLab, but also totally managed, so basically you don't need to care about it if you stay to the defaults. Um, default means, um, per default, the GitLab Web Application Firewall only detects those um, injections or cross-site scripting attacks. So you will get some kind of output in a log file and then can act on it. Um, but of course, you can also customize those rules and define uh, yeah, a blocking mode, which basically means that the request gets blocked and you will get a, a 403 or something. So um, how is this working? In this case, I provided um, a small web application. Um, just with a small field, and if I type in my name correctly, say greeting, I get a greeting, welcome, welcome Nico. And if we now go um, here and put in some JavaScript, so it's basically a small alert containing this is a cross-site scripting attack. Um, and we will now put in the greeting, we would be able to inject um, some cross-site scripting. Um, just to show you, um, we can just open up the log. So in this case, it's once again only the default mode, which is detected only. So which basically means when I push on the button, we will get a log entry and can act on this one. Um, so it's a pretty long command, but it's basically um, we uh, open a, or exit into a container and just open the var log mod sec audit log which you then can use to um, get the insights. So it took some seconds. So if I now check the cross script and attack, I first of all get my alert box in my browser. With my, this is a, a cross script and attack. And on the other hand, I'm getting a log entry, which is basically telling me that we have a, a cross script and injection, and I then can use this message to act on um, and get insight on it. As I said, this is the default mode. I could also enabling, enabling blocking mode, which basically then mean 
I wouldn't have get the pop-up, it just would have get uh, uh, unauthorized and the um, request had been blocked. So pretty nice feature and completely integrated. So if you use the interest from, from GitLab, you already have this feature and just need to check uh, and monitor your logs. Good. So two more things. One is a tool called Customize. Not sure, does any one of you know Customize? Okay, some of you. Um, it's basically a tool which helps you deploying your applications. So it's, you might need to think, hey, why do I need Customize? I can use Helm, um, which is pretty common. Um, but for me, and it's only my opinion, um, I use Helm if we would like to package a bigger, complex application and would like to share it with somebody or to deploy it on 20 different environments. So there's Helm's pretty good. I have templating and so on. It's pretty nice. But if I just would like to deploy my one or two microservices completely integrated with my CI CD pipeline into my environment, I don't need templating. I don't need rollbacks, at least not provided by Helm. If I would like to do a rollback, I will do it with my CI CD pipeline and not with, with, with Helm. So Customize is a pretty nice uh, small feature uh, or tool which can help me with it. Um, why? It has no template overhead. So it's basically mean I have my deployment, my service uh, definition files, manifest YAML files, and just adding a second file where I define my customizations. Um, so it's less complex. I don't need any kind of CLI. It's completely integrated with kubectl. Um, which basically just reduce my complexity, and it's, for me, it's much, uh, much easier. Um, you can use it, as I said, with, with kubectl apply with the minus k option, or on the other hand, you can also install the customized CLI, but feature-wise, they're completely different. So if you have kubectl installed, you can use it, and everything is fine. So what can you do with customize? It's just a small screenshot from the documentation. You can do things like, I would like to add annotations to any kind of my deployments. I would like to add common labels. Think about you are deploying in one stage to development. You can add to all of your uh, manifests and resources the label development. And then in the second stage, you would like to deploy to production. And you can add label productions without doing templating or customizing your YAML files and stuff like this. Um, you can override images, namespaces, you can add prefix and suffix to resources. So um, pretty nice stuff. It has also options to generate config maps, um, generate secrets, um, and so on. So how does it work? Uh, let me go to my next project. Um, here I have a small... Um, Folder deployment, it's contained out of uh, two folders, a base folder and an overlay folder. Um, in the base folder, I see my normal files. So I have a deployment YAML, which is basically uh, a deployment definition. On my Kubernetes, I have an ingress YAML, which is basically an ingress definition, and I have a service definition. So just basic, basic files, nothing special. But I have a some call, somehow called customization YAML, and this one, I can define to say my customized CLI what it should do. In this case, it's just, hey, I have these three resources and nothing else. So no customization, just information. Please use the three files in my folder. Um, but I also have the second folder, which is the overlay folder. And here have two folders, dev and production. And if when I go to the production one, I have another customized YAML. Um, and this one tells me, hey, please use my base, which is basically my deployment ingress service, and add a custom label environment developer to all resources, and please also add a prefix dev minus to all of my resources, and um, please patch my, um, my resources with these two YAML files. Um, so if you check the YAML file, it's basically an environment variable. Once again, the title of my web app, which I would like to change. Um, 
And on the other hand, it's just, um, yeah, my replica um, for dev. I only want to run one replica for production. I would like to have three replica files, uh, replicas running, three pods running. Yeah, and this is how I can use customized, customized my deployment files. My resources stay as they are. My def definitions, I can just add uh, customization YAML with the customizations I would like to, to deploy based on my, on my stage. And if we have a look at the, the ICD pipe pipeline, it's pretty straightforward. It's a one-liner, just kubectl apply minus k, which basically means please use customize. And the folder um, I would like to use, in this case, I define the folder with an environment variable, which is basically development, and then I could override it in a second stage and put in production to deploy my production um, environment. So pretty straightforward. So last but not least, and I need to be a little bit faster, um, is GitLab serverless. Um, GitLab serverless is somehow also called function as a service, um, but basically means you just need to care about your code. So you're writing a code, you're writing a business logic, and don't care about how to containerize it, how to build it, and how to deploy it. It's completely done in the backend. So as I mentioned, it's function as a service, and it's based on some open source tools, um, Knative, which is a serverless stack on top of um, Kubernetes, Kaneko, we already learned about Kaneko, and Istio, which is a service mesh um, just for routing your requests to the different version and so on. Um, GitHub Serverless supports Go, Node.js, and Ruby. Um, with the open fast integration, you can also um, use C Sharp, Python, and PHP. But basically, besides this, you can use any language. Um, you just need to provide a Docker file, basically the information how to build the application um, with your code, and then you can use any other language um, you would like. Because it's completely open source and running on Kubernetes, it's, you can have multi-cloud support, you can deploy it to any kind of cloud, and you have auto-scaling, including scaling to zero. It's basically means if you have a function rendering some kind of pictures, um, the whole application scales down to zero if it's not used, and if it gets a request, it scales up um, as much as it uh, needs to. So um, let me show you this. Uh, basically, it's just, uh, in this case, uh, not just uh, app, basically doing nothing except providing me a hello from GitLab serverless. And we have, um, once again, a pipeline which uses a template which is provided by GitLab. So it basically means I am, first of all, building the function, which basically means it is a Docker build based on Kaneko and then deploys the function into uh, our registry within our project. And then I need the second um, definition file, which is the serverless YAML. Um, then I need to write, I would like to have a function. I need to define a provider, which is trigger mesh. Um, in the back end, if you use uh, open fast integration, it would be open fast. And then you need to define your, your function, in this case, it's a JS file. You need to provide um, your source and the run app you would like to use, in this case, not JS. And that's it. With that, you will get in the operation tab under serverless your function. And as you see, the function is deployed, but we do not have any pods running um, because it scaled down to zero. So let's do a, a quick curl with the post command uh, against our function. In this case, 100 times. We now will see the first one will take a bit longer because none of the pod is started. So it's now starting the pod. And now the requests are running. If you now go back to the UI, it might took some seconds until we see that the pod is up and running. 
but it basically should. Let's do it on the console serverless. Hello. Ah, uh, here we go. Ah, sorry. Here is our pod running. So we have one instance at the moment. And now we can schedule a, a tool which generates a um, little bit of traffic. And we now should see, let me split the terminal and copy it over. We now should see. that it's scaling up. It should scale up. It's not scaling up. Perfect. <laughs> OK, so now we see it's one pod running. Normally, it should scale up in some seconds. Um, but yeah, normally it should scale up. <laughs> OK, so we have end of time already. Um, just a final slide. Um, my slides are already online. The demos are all in my GitLab repo. It's open. Um, some related blog posts um, to the stuff. And yeah, sorry, we have no time for questions, but just see me outside if you have any of them. Thanks.